Now, in other news, the pharmaceutical giant Johnson & Johnson has agreed to pay almost $9 billion to settle tens of thousands of lawsuits alleging its talcum powder caused ovarian cancer. Now, Johnson & Johnson has never admitted wrongdoing, but stopped shelling, selling the talc-based baby powder in the US and in Canada in 2020. If approved by a court in the U.S. state of New Jersey, the payout would be one of the largest liability settlements in U.S. history, alongside those by tobacco companies and opioid manufacturers. Well, joining me to discuss is our, our science editor, Shirley Sipbon. Hi, Shirley. Hello. Um, so we've often heard of these reports that asbestos could be linked to cancer, but that's normally in const on construction sites when building materials are involved. Why would asbestos being baby powder? Well, accidentally. We know that in construction sites, well, it's used deliberately because before knowing that it could cause uh, and favor the development of tumors, well, it was seen for its qualities because asbestos actually is very resistant. It's this uh, uh, series of mineral minerals with uh, long, flexible fires of fibers, sorry, and it's actually resistant to fire, to heat. It's resistant to various chemicals, and it's also very cheap. Of course, uh, we all discovered that it can generate cancer, so it was banned in 1997. And since then, we try to uh, decontaminate buildings across the world. But in the case of baby powder, it's completely different. It's all accidental because baby powder is made mainly of uh, th three main components, which are all mineral. It's uh, magnesium, it's silicon, and it's oxygen. And sometimes by accident, then once again, uh, it can be contaminated with asbestos. And when it's used, when uh, some women use it on their genitals, uh, it's used to dehumidify, to, uh, to get rid of some smells maybe that was used years ago, not so much today. Well, it can reach their ovaries and also their lymph nodes, and it can contribute to the development of various tumors and to ovarian cancer. That's uh, in theory so... First, uh, for, this has been known for a long time. There were suspicions about this for a long time. It was uh, taken out of the market in North America. And this year, 2023, it will be banned across the world. And Shirley, even though Johnson & Johnson has agreed to pay a lot of money to settle these cases, it still says there is no asbestos in its baby powder. How does it make that argument? Well, it says it's only making the settlement because it wants to get rid of this case. It says, it says the accusations are completely wrong. It has seen dozens of uh, reports and studies showing there is no asbestos in uh, its baby powder and there is no uh, increased risk of getting tumors. But other, and some reports say that indeed and don't really uh, understand the direct correlation between baby powder and the cancers. But other reports have been saying the opposite for many years since the 1980s. And even uh, more recently, in 2016, there was a report saying that using uh, this uh, baby powder when it's contaminated increases uh, the risks of getting cancer by 30% which is uh, huge. So this is a different report. And, uh, well, basically, Johnson Johnson still says these reports are fake, flawed. This goes on. And one of those uh, reports is from the Reuters news, news agency. They say there are numerous studies that show that there is asbestos indeed in baby powder. Um, Reuters says Johnson & Johnson is trying to hide the truth of this. Um, what can you tell us about that particular allegation? Well, it's very interesting because what Reuters did, Reuters investigation, is that they put together and they, uh, it's all available on their site, all the studies done since the 1970s. And they show many things. For one, these images show traces of asbestos in baby powder. So this, this dates back many years. And also, uh, so they bring this uh, reports, all these reports that show that indeed Johnson & Johnson also knew about this. And this specific memo, among other memos, says it shows uh, the policy of Johnson & Johnson where they say they don't want to carry out too many tests and too many studies themselves because they don't want to give any elements to the, the rivals or to those trying to attack their baby powder. So it's pretty interesting because it shows that they didn't necessarily uh, have all these uh, studies 
to preserve and bring more security for their clients and users, but to protect themselves. That w that's what this memo shows. It says, when we're attacked, we'll carry out a study. But if we're not attacked, let's not carry out any study. Really interesting. Thanks very much indeed, Shirley, for telling us a bit about that. And we'll um, talk a bit about more about this issue uh, in uh, the next program with a guest as well. Now it's time, though, for this week's